The last extension we'll discuss is user-defined aggregate functions. So user-defined aggregate functions are functions that work just like other built-in system aggregate functions like sum and count, but defined and custom built by the user. So if you've worked with user-defined aggregate functions before, you might know that the actual implementation of UDAFs can be rather fine-grained. So to create a UDAF, you need to define four UDFs that handle each phase of the aggregate function in initializing, iterating, merging, and terminating. So we begin by defining a state type that will be used for aggregation across these four UDFs. The initialize function simply defines and returns our state variable. The iterate function will iterate over our data set accepting our state as a default argument and the provided value as the second argument and performing the necessary aggregation logic as it iterates. Now, once the data on the partitions have finished iterating, the merge function merges all of our state variables two at a time until finally our terminate function defines what to return. So let's move over to Studio to see a full UDAF example. So for this example, we'll recreate the system function average, which calculates the average value from a set of numbers. So first we'll create a table and insert the values of one through five into our table. So now if we select average of column I from this table, we'll get three. So we'll recreate this same aggregate function of average. So here we can see the final create aggregate function that will be our end product. You can see that it returns an integer and the state is defined as a record. The first position S will hold our sum and the second position, C, will keep track of the count of numbers we've summed so far. And finally, we'll run the average user-defined aggregate function exactly the same way we would run the system function of average. So let's observe the four UDFs that we'll need to create this UDAF. So again, the initialize function merely defines our state variable and returns it. And here we see we initialize our state as a record with both our sum and count at zero. Our iterate function will execute as many times as there are values in our data set. So for our example here, since we've inserted five rows, this iterate function will run five times. The first argument is our state, which is default, and our second argument is the value being processed by our UDAF, in this case one, and then two, and then three, and so on. Within the body of this UDF, we can see that we add our value to the sum and simply increment our count by one. You can see in the comment below how we expect our state variable to grow with each iteration. And since single store is distributed, it's possible that this data may be distributed across partitions in your cluster. So the merge function handles how the data should be merged together as it's returned by each partition. So in our case, we'll add the sums and counts of each state together. You can see in the comment that if one partition held the rows for one, two, and three, it would return a state of sum being six and the count being three. And if the other partition had the rows of four and five, it would return the state of the sum being nine and the count being two our merge UDF would add these records together to 15 and 5. And finally, our terminate function accepts the state as an argument and returns a scalar value, in our case, an integer. So in our case, since we are returning an average, we'll simply divide the sum by the count. So to bring this full circle, as we create our user-defined aggregate function, we make sure to pair each UDF with the initialize with, iterate with, merge with, and terminate with functions. And lastly, we will create our UDAF. And now we can use our user-defined aggregate function like we would with any other system-defined aggregate function. So if we run this function 
with i being the argument, we get 3.